Folks, welcome to Local Chat. It's episode 29, and uh, it's also the 22nd of July, 2021. Joining me today, as always, is my good friend, Ian Gibson. You ever think about if you say welcome, just a little bit weird, it sounds a lot like whale come? Hi. Sorry, Ian coming to us from Tumblr in 2013. <laughs> oh, every time somebody says welcome, that's in my head. It's just right there. I just you think know? of a guy at the top of a, a mask going, welcome! <laughs> <laughs> oh no, not again! <laughs> it's like an iceberg, you hit that stuff. Uh, also joining us from Papa John's, it's Chris Elliott from Save Data. Ian Gibson's opinions about Stargate suck. It's true. I'll be right back. I started watching Stargate. <laughs> he, he's running away. He's going to defend himself. Now Chris and I match identically. The same boxes, <laughs> the same headphones. Show it off. Show it off. Come on. <laughs> I couldn't hear oh. it. I never noticed that. They're I'm good, sorry. Man. I'm sorry, <laughs> audio listeners. Uh, <laughs> you don't get to see the magic. <laughs> Actually, you have the, you have the blue ones. I don't. I can't remember I what the, the difference professional is. Professional series. I don't know the difference either. Yeah, I think I just have like the studio version. Oh. They're great. They're great. Anyways, um, we can get rid uh, of the middle guy. Yeah, I was gonna. <laughs> I middle. Oh, well, I guess on that. I'm, I'm always middle. the cream. Uh, I was gonna say I started watching Stargate SG One, and I watched the first two episodes, and I was like, man, I really, I really don't remember this show. Like that's pretty good. Uh, and it got to the Sorry, first three. It got to the fourth episode. I remembered it beat for beat. And I was like, oh. I was really hoping you were going to say And then I realized I wasn't watching Star Stargate. <laughs> That'd be so like, great. I was watching Star I was Trek. Watching, and then, I was watching the hit show Terra Nova. <laughs> I, I don't know why that particular... It's the Mongolian episode. I, I don't know why I remember it so oh, yeah. well. Uh, and the then I, I got to the fifth episode. The Mongolian episode. I, I got to the fifth episode and I, I forgot it again. I was like, I was, I'm, I'm pretty much probably going to be like that the entire run. But, you know, it's good to watch Stargate again. It's a great show. It's good. It's good. I was watching it today. It's great. I forgot how stupid that show is at times. And the other annoying yeah. part is I'm re I have to rewatch them all become friends again, which is annoying. Um, that is yeah. Annoying. And then the only it's other thing already. is that entire show up to season eight through ten is 480p. <laughs> oh, uh, and it's oh, totally yeah, no, I'm in. I think season five, definitely season six, where I'm at now, they switch to widescreen. So it, I think it is yeah. still technically 480p, but it at least becomes widescreen. Yeah. It. Well, yeah. They didn't go to HD until later, and they didn't shoot it. They shot it all digitally. So. Nothing yeah. we can do about it. Folks, we are a video game podcast and also Stargate Star SG-1 podcast. Um, Teal'c, would you? Oh my god, stop talking rather, about Stargate. Uh, my favorite part about Teal'c, just real quick, my favorite part oh about Teal'c is you think that bang the, the goal whenever, spot? He, whenever he's in like <laughs> normal Earth, he always has to wear a hat of some kind because he knows people will freak out about his emblem. It's never like explicitly said, but yeah. he just always has a hat on. But it's it's sometimes it's a baseball cap, but 99% of the time it's just like a weird like fedora or like a fancy beanie. Like it's always like this weird hat choice that he has to use in public <laughs> and it's great. Also, one of the first episodes, someone says, oh, you really MacGyvered that to uh, <laughs> Richard, is that what, Richard Dean Anderson. <laughs> and he's yeah. just like, yeah, <laughs> he played MacGyver. Um, I three subpixel podcasts in the last week. They have all featured an extended discussion about fucking Stargate. <laughs> Listen, Chris, there's only one way to stop this. Start watching Stargate. It's no, great. You should do it. Okay, um, real, talk, real talk, though. Have you have you seen it before? Slash, do you hate it? Do you just never want to watch it? Like, I want to hear your take on it. I've seen the film Stargate, and I don't remember it very well. That's unfortunate. So I, I will say this: I think the film is literally the low point of the entire series because it's too much of like it's got a little bit too much dumb action movie in it, and the series is just like, what if we did a Star Trek style TV show with like heavy deep sci fi, but in the Stargate world? So. Maybe give it to you. Yeah, so okay, you'll I, love it. You'll love it. You'll absolutely I will consider love it. thinking about giving it a try. I'll take it's it. on Hulu. Okay, hey, honey, Netflix. do you want to watch Stargate SG1? Fuck, I love Stargate. <laughs> <laughs> yes! 
You've yes. made the, you've made yes. Ian Gibson and Will Crosby the happiest men on earth. <laughs> oh, I'm so happy. Uh, uh, sorry, can I get your opinion uh, on Stargate as a whole? Well, as a whole, I'd bang it. All right, you you, you, you have the. It's pretty good from Vic. So Vic curses yeah. like a sailor. There you go. Um. Speaking of sailors, uh, ahoy, welcome. Uh, we're gonna bounce. <laughs> welcome, <laughs> welcome. That's the new ahoy, ahoy, uh, welcome. Some pixel podcast greeting. <laughs> ahoy, can we get shirts that say ahoy, welcome? <laughs> That's our first merch for local chat. Um, God, make damn it right it. now. Um, yeah, you do that. Uh, folks, we're going to go into... I have still not updated the up deck for local chat, and I think of it right before the show premieres. Uh, we're going to We're going to talk about... We're going to talk about what we've been playing. Uh, I'm going to start with... I'm going to leave the third thing on all of our lists for the end. I figured so I think We could all talk about that. So I'm just going to breeze through mine quick. Um, I mentioned last week I didn't want to start any heavy RPGs because I've been reading uh, a heavy fantasy book, and I, not that I would get confused, I just wanted to focus on that. Anyways, whole long thing. So I was sticking to some single player games, and I fell upon Bioshock 1 Remastered, uh, and I breezed through that over the weekend. It's a really fast game if you just go through it. Um, yeah. And I think I got all the achievements that you could while playing through. The only thing is I missed one or two audio logs, but I didn't want to look them up because that's annoying. Um, Bioshock 1, shocker, fantastic video game. Um, yeah, very good. Very, very good. I I think I might do a video on this because it's something I noticed. At first I was annoyed about, and then I noticed it was cool. And Ken Levine, I don't know if it's his idea, but he, he does the same thing in System Shock 2, which is the inhabitants of rapture seem to move around as if they're yeah. actually there so you'll go yep. into an area and then come back mm -hmm. out and there's people there after you cleared it and i think we're so used to modern video games that when you clear an area it's clear um so you like come back out and there's people there and you're like first you're like oh these stupid people respond but then you realize it's a whole new set of people and they're just they're literally looking around looting and stuff just like you are. Uh, and yeah. I think that's really cool. Because, um, yeah, like like I said, the first time I was annoyed, like, oh, I can't believe they respond already. And then I kind of noticed throughout the game, it just pretends these people are all here with you and they're just walking around searching things. <clears throat> and I think that's really cool. And yeah, then I, th I, th I think that's a, that's a very interesting point. <laughs> that's one of those... Uh, you know, old games, let's admit it, a lot of the, the stuff, design ideas, et cetera, mechanics are a bit outdated, but it's always funny finding those gems like that that are much better than modern games. Like, for example, one of the games near the top of our rating system list, Control, has an awful implementation of that, which is just enemies randomly respawn in random areas all the time, yeah. you know? And and it's, it's like, it doesn't feel like a lived-in world or anything like that, whereas Bioshock is like, no, we're going to make the player believe that there are roving bands of looters that they run into every now and then. And that keeps the area dynamic. You, you never really know if it's cleared or not. Yeah. And, and I remember it's the same thing I ran into when I played through System Shock 2 last year, is you would come back to a previous level uh, just to go back there to find stuff. And there would be the new creepy robot lady walking around and stuff. And like the more I think about it, I'm like, yeah, these, these people would just explore the ship. And even the robots in in system shock don't do that like the robots patrol their areas because that's what yeah, they would yeah. do but of course all the <clears> creepy <throat> psychopaths walk around and scream and that game is terrifying by the way um also i, I kind of forgot how scary bioshock is it's like very it eerie dark yeah. uh and because of that enemy respawn stuff i don't feel safe ever versus like uh, a recent example, Resident Evil Village, I know I've cleared an area, so I feel safe, where Bioshock, like, I'll turn around and there's someone there and I will will jump. Um, so I thought that was fairly interesting. <clears throat> so I finished that, booted up Bioshock 2, uh, and played about 15 minutes of that, and that was before I got addicted to another game that we'll talk about in a little bit. Um, so I haven't had a chance to really dive into that more, but I think I'm just going to plow through that and then plow through Infinite again. Um, I... 
I'm very curious for your findings, not just on Bioshock 2, but also Infinite, because for me, I played maybe an hour's worth of Bioshock 2 when it came out, and it just felt like more like Bioshock, mm -hmm. and I was like, okay, I guess I'll just put this down because there's not really anything new or exciting in this, but I've heard since then a lot different from that, so I'm curious... Yeah. I'm not ready to play it, but I'm curious to hear your take on it. Yeah. Did you guys hear anything like that about Bioshock 2? The thing with Bioshock 2 is that it's at the in the very beginning of the game, you feel very similar to your character in Bioshock 1. But as you unlock a lot more of the big daddy powers and stuff, mm -hmm. and you get to feel more like a big clunky badass, you feel like a big clunky badass. Uh, which is like, I understand why it's that way, because it's a video game and you have to have power scaling. But also, yeah. it's like, a big daddy should never be a bushover because they are gigantic monster monstrosities. Yeah. Yeah. I remember like, I think the, the lead up to Bioshock two is cool. Uh, Cause I remember following like the ad campaign and everything. And it was like, it's essentially someone is, has revived Rapture cause the little girls have been missing uh, from the surface. Yeah. And you even find like, there's an audio diary I found at the beginning where this guy's like, I finally found the sunken city. I think my little girl Claire's here. Like he found the city and came down and then mm -hmm. he's just dead bodies there with an audio log. So I think that setup's really cool. Um, and of course it's a good design cause you can just add more parts to that city that you didn't go to uh, in the first game. Cause you didn't need to uh, essentially. Writing's a big step down, but that's to be. Yeah. Expected. Yeah. Uh, and then and Infinite. Oh boy, the writing in Infinite. <laughs> I remember really enjoying yeah. Infinite, other than a couple things, but uh, I like the setting of I'm, Infinite a lot. Yes, uh, I think yeah. crazy flying eugenics racists is pretty racists. good. <laughs> it's my um, favorite brand of racism. It's, <laughs> yeah. I've said before, I think, I genuinely think Bioshock Infinite might have the worst, sorry, the best first hour in a video game. It's very good. Very good. I yeah. don't, I, I, I do not like Bioshock Infinite. I think it's a rather poor. Bioshock. It's yeah. a fine level shooter, I guess, whatever the yeah. fuck. But like that first hour is is stunningly good. Yeah. I, I was going to mention, I'm, I'm, I can't wait for you to play through Bioshock Infinite, especially coming hot off one and two. Because for me, I felt disappointed in Bioshock Infinite because it felt like it felt like a decent Bioshock clone. It didn't feel yeah. like the third in the series. Yeah. And, and I, like, I have a very specific example of that where, it, it, and correct me if I'm wrong, it's been a while, Bioshock 1, you unlock upgrades for your weapon and you're choosing, okay, do I want to make this? So for example, I think one, like you can choose, do I want to make this semi-automatic or do I want to make it do more damage? Like you're, you're literally modifying how the weapon operates in a way. Um, whereas in Bioshock Infinite, you don't upgrade your weapons. You just find a machine gun. And when you look at it, it's the same version as the semi-automatic weapon. It's just that it's a new weapon. And yeah. it's just so stupid, like like little design decisions, like all over the place, where it felt like they were going backwards in the Bioshock series. So, so I'm curious to hear how wrong or right I am on that, because again, it's been a while since I played that, and it's been even longer since I played Bioshock. So, I kind of want to revisit the Bioshock series. I have no desire to actually play them, so I'm yeah. gonna live vicariously through the, you. Um, yeah, the Bioshock remaster. I have it on PC and Xbox. I played on Xbox. It crashed a couple times. It had quick resume. Um, mm -hmm. but there's no auto saving that except when you change levels locations. So I was pretty uh -oh. much done with a level a couple times and it crashed. Uh, Oof. and I had to go cause I wasn't saving that often just cause I didn't think about it. And then towards mm -hmm. like the last hour of that game, I probably saved every 15 minutes. I was just like, Oh, please. Oh, um, yeah. so yeah, that's, uh, that's all I've really been playing. Um, Christopher. Uh, sorry, just on saving, I think you'll appreciate this well. I was playing something there. I was playing Final Fantasy, and um, I went to Control S. Like, I was in Photoshop. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. Um, yes, uh, video games. I've been playing them. Uh, most of my time has been divided in three things, one of which we'll talk about later. The first one is Guilty Gear Strive. It's, uh, oh. it's, a, fi it's a game where you hit people. It's a fighting game. Um, it's the it's the new Guilty Gear. In case you haven't seen it, and in case if you haven't seen it, you're probably not going to care about this. But uh, the game is good. It's a good fighting game. There's some balance issues. Uh, man, I was I was watching a stream last night of Leffen, who is a uh, Smash player, just whining for three and a half hours, basically about how uh, things are unfair in a video game. I think fighting game community. And then 
and then uh well that's smash in particular and then yeah. uh arguing with his chat that he's allowed to complain which he is but he also kept going on about it <laughs> um, I, just, I don't care just, just just complain don't defend your need to complain just complain it's fine yeah um game's great uh soundtrack kicks ass um it's that perfect level of guilty gear absolute insanity for those of you who don't know the the lore behind the guilty gear franchise is fuck fucking wild and just an insane level of character names and like backstories and like people with false identities there's a character a character named Ch uh, chip zenough uh who is the president <laughs> of earth shut up he's the president of earth actually just the president of america but he claims all of earth uh and he is was born in japan america hmm. Oh, Japan, just, America? No, no, no. He was born in Japan. He was born in small town America. He was born in Japan. Oh, I see. He is the president of the world slash America. Uh, he cool. also is a ninja that you can play as. It sounds you like can, a fighting you game. You can also play as uh, the head of his secret security, <laughs> who is a dope lady in a suit with a magical wolf that loves recycling. And newly announced, the Secretary of Defense. <laughs> <laughs> Does he fight Raiden on the top of the Bank of America in no, New York? No, Will. He's a gigantic fat man who carries around a coffin labeled Area 51. Does he Naruto run? <laughs> no, he, he's big and he waddles and he swings the coffin around like oh, a baseball bat. I'm kind of into that. Um, uh, Wow. Yeah, that game fucking rules. Fighting games are amazing. Uh, I'm glad that I have one to play that actually I'm enjoying again. Um, speaking, I mean, I don't think you guys have any input on uh, uh, Guilty Gear. Oh, I was just going to ask about the latest balancing patch, but I don't think I need to. There hasn't been one why, since the game released why does, out a month. Yeah. Why does the gear feel guilty? Okay, so the gears are a class of people a former civilization, a level no. of technology. Why did you do that? <laughs> and that might be it. It might just be those three. Oh my god. There's also the beasts, not animals. Oh, X-Men? Yes. God. There's a character named Ramlatal. <laughs> she's, a lady, she's a lady who doesn't wear shoes, who floats around with two big swords and, f and fights people. Is this the series with the panda? Or is that no, Tekken? That's, that's, that's Tekken. Tekken. That's and Tekken. that character's name is Panda, by the way. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> so wonderful. Say the I, mean, I guess you're not wrong. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, Guilty Gear is lore is the, the stupidest shit. It's so good. Um, I, I hate this. Also, at the beginning of every round is heaven or hell. You decide. Let's rock. <laughs> so the who goes that's to heaven and who goes to hell? Huh? You, you, you decide. <laughs> Winner's <Let's> choice. <laughs> Oh god. Uh and other than that, I have been playing uh the glory of old school RuneScape. And I have made a discovery oh. about RuneScape since the last uh -oh. time I was on this podcast. RuneScape is the best MMO that isn't an MMO. Because here's the thing. RuneScape, technically speaking, like like yes, it is an MMO. It, it really is. But the big thing about RuneScape and like something that I am doing currently is I'm playing an Iron Man account. An Iron Man account is a special kind of account in RuneScape. You can make it. It's officially supported by the company um, where you are forbidden from trading with other players. You cannot take part in the player economy, among other things, but that's the main limitation, which means all of your resources, your 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 stone, your wood, whatever the fuck, you have to go get it yourself. You can't just, you know, throw money at your problem. Oh, that's cool. Um, and it, it has made me realize something, like, as I've progressed decently i'm pretty like i have this i've i've honestly played this count very efficiently and it's gotten it like the levels my levels are up there Ooh. um i i have sort of come to the realization that some one of the reasons that runescape works so well as an experience that like i can play this and talk about it and annoy my friends because they don't, who don't want to hear about runescape <laughs> um but i still get the full experience of playing an mmo because this one was designed with the grim reality in mind that your friends will eventually grow tired of an MMO and quit it. <laughs> <laughs> and they've prepared for that by making oh, it, Lord. making it a game that is accessible as a singular experience, which I think is while a little That's sad good. and nihilistic is brilliant. And it really speaks to the fact that like this game is very, very well designed and people who have 
people who hate RuneScape, and there's plenty of reasons to hate RuneScape. There's plenty of reasons to hate any video game. But pe most people that hate RuneScape hate it because they've grown comfortable in the fact of they hated it always because they were WoW players. They hate it because it's an old, bad-looking video game. Um, or they just, like, it's... I stopped playing RuneScape, therefore it must not be good. And uh, that line of thinking is let nihilistic lame bullshit and uh, grow the fuck up except that things reality can change including video games being good fuck you ian gibson wow i didn't hate on runescape though. i just Plenty assume you hate every video on. game that i talk about i actually kind of i enjoyed runescape it was a little bit too old for me to mm -hmm. jump into and enjoy but i, I i've I said that before i think i said it. on this podcast you have to have a yeah. level of nostalgia for it and like i understand that although i will say that like I, i'm not certain that's the case but it definitely helps a lot. Yeah. Great. Uh, you Every time you talk about RuneScape, it makes me want to dive back in uh, again. It's, um, it's, it's a thing where it's like, it's a game that like, because I can play it on my second monitor while I'm doing other things, including working, I have no qualms about saying that it doesn't take, it doesn't take away from my efficiency. If anything, I think it makes me more efficient. That's not a joke. <laughs> um, uh, it, like it helps because I can just like, oh, I'm, I'm doing, I'm progressing in two places at once, serotonin, serotonin. <laughs> um great uh ian were you about to yeah. leave no i my my headphone was making creaking noises i think it's a little, bit... <laughs> a little weird anyways um i've been playing three games first game i've been playing um folks i've been playing i played a lot of kerbal space program over the last week and it's mostly because will and i did a stream where will was playing uh some pixel aerospace check it out um it's good series actually and it's i just seeing you play it i was like i it, i i just want i was coaching way too much in the last episode and it's not because i didn't trust you it's not because i didn't think you were doing the right thing it's not because i was getting frustrated it's because i wanted to play and i was like <laughs> let me shoot you know i was just and so like after the stream i was just like i literally booted up and i did the challenge that we did on stream and i was just like i i, I could do this i could do this right and then i did it and then i was like so i'm just i was playing around a lot with it like there's still a lot of stuff like i don't really know how to dock so i'm trying to teach myself how to dock ksp fantastic game i just really wish it's a fantastic sandbox i think i have like 100 hours in that game all sandbox i just wish there was a better like mission structure because that would be another fun way to play that game as some sort of progression. And the one they have in there is not great. So yeah, super hype for KSP two. still fun to play around with KSP, but um, does have its limitations. Um, the other game I played, I, this was not very well broadcast, but the last weekend, this past weekend, super monkey ball, banana blitz HD was True. free to play for the entire weekend on Xbox live gold um i just happened across a tweet that mentioned it and i was like oh and i've never played super monkey ball so i loaded it up and i probably played it for like an hour and a half that's a fun game i i see why people like super monkey ball even though this one people said yeah. was not great i think because it was the wii version that originally had motion controls but even the hd remake people were downgrading it was fun it seemed like there was a decent amount of levels and i was having i was having a good time you, you guys uh, ever played super monkey ball <clears throat> uh, uh a long time ago super monkey ball one or two is one of my favorite games of all time. Uh, it is so much fun. When I saw you put this on the list, I was like, did it come out? Like, I thought that remaster, the GameCube ones came out already uh, that I pre-ordered. Oh, and I was like, it came out. And then I saw it was this one. And I was like, oh, no, never mind. I, yeah, I am so excited for those remasters because it's specifically the GameCube ones. And the mini games yeah. on that were super fun. The gameplay super fun. It's also the same gameplay as the arcade machine that I like a lot. Um, someday I will have the banana arcade machine, the banana controller yeah. arcade machine in my abode, uh, but not yet. Um, great. So that's all the game. No, that's not all the games. We've the last been game I've been playing that I got everybody else to play. Look, we've been putting this off for literally years, <sighs> and I just got to this point where I was like, I want to play this game now, and you're going to play it with me this Sunday live on stream, or it's never going to happen. And we played Final Fantasy. 14. It was an effective oh, tactic. It was. It, I, I literally was sitting there going, I'm going to install this game and play it. And, and if, if they don't want to do it, then I'm just going to do it anyways, because I'm, I'm ready <laughs> for it. 
And folks, I, I'm really enjoying this game. Well, I, I feel like, uh, Chris, we already know you're uh, borderline addicted to it previously, Recovering yes. Addict. Yeah, we're, was, yeah. Who, you, who, who you've been like, hey, 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 what if I took that addiction and just, uh, you know, milk <laughs> drank that back up? Yeah, and Chris, I, I mean, Will, you've been freshly enjoying it. We started four or five days ago, four days ago, something like that. Yeah, I should check my hour count. I forgot to do that before stream. You can type slash playtime in game. And I, I, I realize that, Chris. I can't do it right now. <gasps> um, no, have it up in a second over here. That's a good no, idea. Kidding. I don't. I don't have it up. <laughs> um, it's great. I have fallen in love with a particular part of the game that annoys everyone else. But uh, <laughs> I'm having a great time. Crafting. Um, he loves crafting. Crafting. I can't. Excuse me. Uh, David in the chat also started on Sunday with us. He's currently level 46. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm level 17 archer, 18 marauder. Uh, I'm like 23 blacksmithing, 18 carpentry, 16 botany, like 15 bla uh, not black mining. 23 mining? Yeah. Dear Lord. <laughs> I okay. am I am I'm level 19 thaumaturgy <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> I don't well, I don't want to I don't want a harsher vibe. I don't want I don't cuz you're having fun. There are very few ways to play a video game wrong. Ugh. You found one. Ugh. Yeah. I all but, this I mean, stupid other stuff is so annoying. <laughs> but all all the in-game tips I've seen in the in-game they say try to pick a class and like not necessarily max it all the way out, but like take it a decent way and then try some of the other ones. And it sounds like that's not the right. It sounds like Will's take is the wrong way to do it, Chris. No, Will's way is insane because he's leveling crafters higher than his main classes. And that is an insane yeah. thing. I'm to only do. doing one class. I, I just I didn't like Marauder, so I just switched to Archer. That's fair. That's fair. Um, but all the crafting classes are great and they're perfect. And they all feed off of each other. That's the best part. That system is really good. Yeah, yeah. Really that's good. why I'm so into it. Cro cross classing your crafting abilities, it's hot. Um, nobody, nobody wants to hear about my max level characters, so I will uh, not talk about them. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm just curious. I want to know something you love about the game. We've kind of already talked about that. Uh, will loves his crafting. I, I okay. really like that. This is this is an MMO. This is a full featured MMO. It's got a whole lot of content. Um, contrary to what people said, it actually does a pretty good job at onboarding. And I don't think the early levels are that boring. And there's like four different ways that it is teaching you like how to play an MMO. Like literally I was doing the, um, the novice guild or the novice hall where they're literally just like, Hey, here's a training session teaching you who to target. Here's teaching you how to avoid AOEs. And I already knew most of that, but it was really nice to get a refresher on that. And then I, I'm playing thaumaturgy where I have to like balance the, the fire and the, and the, the ice. Right. And I didn't really understand what was going on, but I was just paying attention to the tutorials as they're coming out. And it was just like, okay, now I understand it. Now I'm coming up with the rotation on my own because I understand it as opposed to having to go to some guide to tell me that I've been doing it wrong the whole time. And I'm really, really enjoying that. So People complain because the game gives you gives you so many of those question mark in the middle of your screen tutorials, and then they close them because there's too many of them. And then they're like, the game doesn't tell me what to do. It does. You close yeah. the menu. Yeah, they're actually really yeah. good. I've looked up some of them because you can go read them again just to double check things uh you know i was gonna say for thaumaturgy it, would you call it a song of ice and fire um no it's a song of fire and ice because <laughs> oh, it needs right. to be i am a piece of shit george R. Uh, R. R. martin elise is asking uh everyone's uh class breakdown ian sorry what what your thaumaturgy so he dps will be becoming a, he'll be becoming a black mage or a summoner if he wants i uh, eventually when i pay i want to be a red mage but that's down okay the that's down the line a lot because you have to pay yeah. and then buy stormblood yeah. yeah 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 okay making sure you understand that uh william h Crosby will become a bard and then i believe later you want to be a machinist you want to you want the gun yeah i'm not really sure which way but want the sweet power of gun yeah i don't even know if uh, i like archer that much uh mostly i like the crafting uh, I don't know if you guys know this, but <laughs> I love that. For three that. hours today, I ran in a circle mining, and it was joyous. Um, As someone that has maxed all the gatherers and maxed culinarian, and I think maxed blacksmith, um, you're a fucking insane person. God, it's all I did in World of Warcraft. It's so hey, Will, much fun. Hey, hey, Will, when you get to Stormblood, you can fish underwater. <gasps> How does it even work? Do I cast into air? Don't worry about it. <laughs> I, I'm really excited. 
I'm really excited to get into the crafting because I it's not just that I love good crafting systems. I also love leveling up. And I also love the idea of, I mean, I don't know if this is fully possible, but I love the idea of like having a character that is wearing great armor that you built yourself and heads into to battle. And it's not just like, hey, here's a potion I bought. It's just like, I made this potion <laughs> and I'm going to drink it and mess you up, boy. And, you know, like and oh, I'm going, so I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to fuck your whole world up right now. When yeah. you get to raiding, yeah, the best possible scenario when a new raid drops is that you are wearing gear you made yourself with food you made yourself with potions you made yourself because yes. all of the food and potions late game that you buy from stores are way the fuck below where you need them to be. And right when a raid drops, mm-hmm. the best gear will be that raids, obviously, but one tick below that will be the highest Custom. level gear you can make yourself with max yeah. crafters. And see, I, I love that. I love that because it's one thing to like loot and up your level and, and do the whole gear lottery to get better, better, better gear. But it's another thing to be like, no, I put the effort into this gear. Yo, also, yeah. when like when you hit max level, it'll be like all the gear you get for progression, like doing dungeons and shit. Uh, yeah. The gear of whatever the t- highest trial or sometimes smaller raid does. And then above them are the like top raid gear and then the top shit you can build. Yeah. That's that's that sounds fantastic. Yeah, so I'm excited. To and do then that. A, a new expansion comes out and immediately outclasses everything you're wearing. Yeah. yeah. So I do I do want to switch a little bit, which is to say we need to talk about this game's not perfect, and I think we should do due diligence to talk about some things that are not great about it. And I think for me, the number one thing is this is going to sound obvious, but quite frankly, it's a completely valid criticism. This game has MMO combat, and MMO combat almost always feels bad where you're like, I'm going to like do the weird movement up to a person then I'm going to click on them. And then I'm going to like, then I'm going to do my rotation. And I was just like, especially for casters, just like cast. Okay. Now click the button again, cast. And that combat, it's not their fault. That's the standard MMO combat, but I hate that combat. It doesn't feel good. Right? Like, except when you get the rotation just right. But even then it's like, it's like a cherry on top of a pile of shit. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Am I crazy here? Um, you're dealing with a couple of things. First off is that at, across the board, all classes had parts of their kit yanked out as they added more levels and more expansions in order to keep you with not having 58 buttons to click. Oh, okay. Yeah. So like when I when I, when I booted up and we started playing again, I went on to <clears throat> one of my max level uh, classes, uh, Warrior, and like four or five of my buttons were grayed out with a slash through because they had been removed. So gotcha, new buttons gotcha. could be added in their place. Um, gotcha. So you're, you're it, that, that that affects the low levels substantially because like there's just pieces of your kit you're not getting. But it isn't the impetus of the MMO to create a loop and a uh, rotation for each class that is different enough feeling mm-hmm. and makes you want to continue to play it. And I will yeah. say that FF14, before you unlock jobs, when you're just using classes, before you unlock ninja, before you unlock black mage when you're when you're a thaumaturge before a black mage they do a poor job at giving you enough to to make that interesting yeah yeah and Mm -hmm. i think i think you know i played some mmos before so i feel like the combat gets good when you when you start to understand the rotation and you have an excessive rotation etc and you have some interesting enemies and i can totally understand what you're saying about how at that low level i'm at right now there's not really an interesting rotation there's not a lot of depth to it and the enemies are not not super interesting the fights aren't super interesting right now so so fingers crossed it does get better yeah uh, ha- have you done any dungeons yet no no not yet okay yeah uh, if yeah i mean fighting enemies outside of dungeons is both a waste of time and not fun so yeah we gotcha. gotta do that first dungeon i'm prepped for it so uh whenever yeah. i'm also ready. prepped for it um <laughs> uh, my my big complaint with the game is i feel like the combat system is stupid and a bolt on to a really good crafting game uh and i don't even know why it's there it kind of just doesn't make sense um <laughs> yeah it's weird um uh... <laughs> shall we move on i'm not joking anymore go play RuneScape. Uh, no this is yeah. this crafting is better than runescape um yeah uh folks we're gonna move on to my favorite section of the show the news, which means I get to play the one and only news theme. Uh, make sure everything's turned up and unmuted. Here we go. Time for the news. Here's 
the news. We're talking about news. It's gaming news. What's up, news? Man who wrote that song loves welcome. Uh, folks, it's time for the news. Um, there's a lot of news this week. Uh, there's some really bad news and stupid news. Uh, I don't want to talk about it. I, I, I don't, I just want to touch on it briefly. Uh, people know our stance on please be nice to people. Um, and just, uh, I'm just going to go through it quickly here. Uh, California suing Activision Blizzard for their horrible workplace culture. There was a two-year investigation of this, um, including some really bad things that I'm not going to mention on the show uh, because I don't want to. They don't make me happy. Um, you can read all about this. Uh, we specifically has, have this Bloomberg article linked. Uh, you can go look it up. Some truly horrible stuff, and I hope they get everything that's coming to them. Um, I hope they go bankrupt. I'm not even joking anymore. Yeah, it's 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 crazy um i i i just i want to say something um i've worked in the games industry there is a serious problem in the games industry i don't want to make a generalization that all game studios are like this but i think i can pretty confidently state a majority of game studios are like this there is way too much of a bro anything goes culture you know if you think about a startup culture where it's just like hey man let's hang out and shoot some ideas and things like that Take that, but then put like a college frat party on top of it. It's pretty bad. You know, I will fully admit it was my first workplace job and I partook in that a bit too much in that frat, frat house atmosphere, making inappropriate jokes. I, I don't think I made anybody feel uncomfortable. I certainly hope I didn't, but it's, it's, it's almost an intoxicating frat house environment and it almost encourages people to go way too far too often. Yeah. And I think that is unfortunately the norm at video game studios it's one of those things where people are okay with crunch and they're okay getting underpaid at a video game studio because they think it's a cool job because of the frat house environment and the crunch needs to stop the underpay needs to stop and the frat house environment needs to stop you don't need to be you know khakis and a button down but yeah it's it's very unprofessional and it's making people uncomfortable and it's driving people to suicide, literally. So right. it, it needs to stop. It's a workplace setting. It's a workplace. You can joke around in a workplace. Um, and people yeah. do joke around in a workplace, but don't target it at people and make people feel bad and all that sort of stuff. Or uncomfortable. Or uncomfortable yeah. or anything like that. Anyways. Or threatened for fuck's yeah, sake. I know. Yeah. It's it's yeah. truly bad stuff. Go read it at your own risk. Um, but I hope they get everything coming to them. Moving on to happier things. Um, everyone's dead. No, uh, I thought this was really funny, Ian. I think you put this here, the War Thunder thing. Oh uh, my god, I, I want to talk about this topic so fucking bad. <laughs> I assume you so guys good. know more about it, but I saw this and I laughed so hard. So, so let me I, me I, I out loud at work saw that topic and went, "Fuck yes, video games." <laughs> so let me let me to the office behind me went, "What?" <laughs> and I was like, "Don't worry about it." So let me let me tee it up. So basically, War Thunder is a um, first of all, it's a it's a horribly free to play monetized game that tries to be semi realistic tank battles, also warship battles, also uh, airplane battles now. But they try to be somewhat realistic with their tanks included in the game. Uh, and one of the uh, tanks they've included is the Challenger Two, which has been in service with the British Army since 1994. Um, and like any other thing in any other video game ever, fans were arguing about balance and also realism. And one person uh, took it too far. They claimed to be in the military. I believe they claimed to be a uh, real-life Challenger 2 tank commander. And they posted sections of a classified manual for the Challenger 2 tank to basically say, look, devs, this is what the real tank is, and you are wrong. Yes. And they had, to, they had to ban them and reach out to the UK defense and basically say, hey, we think this guy's posting UK classified documents just to, just to win a video game argument, which is... <laughs> hilarious that's incredible. if you don't like this this topic there is no joy left in your life it's amazing <laughs> yeah. this is the opposite of yeah. what we just talked about this is a so, video game so at its finest <laughs> it's it's just like nobody this guy believes you can win an argument on the internet which is an insane thing to believe um you cannot yeah. win an argument on the internet. it's undoable um but then like he just do he he doubled down and then never stopped doubling down yeah he's like I'd, I'd rather go to jail for war crimes than be wrong. 
Yeah, God, that's so it, it's, good. It's like a um, slightly related story. This happened back in 2019. There was an employee of the DCS, of Eagle Dynamics, who makes the DCS series, which is like the ultra-realistic military flight simulator. They were arrested for attempting to smuggle classified jet fighter manuals out of a country so what? that they could use them for reference material in the game, which is, that's hilarious. That's just like, I understand you're trying to make the most realistic like military flight simulator ever, but please don't try and smuggle, you know, classified documents. Yeah. You gotta uh, take pictures of- with your micro camera. <laughs> For, and yeah. get your microfilm <laughs> printed out yeah it's it's crazy oh that is absolutely excellent <clears throat> i think that's my favorite actually i'm sorry i need to add so here's the thing uh tashenko who's the developer is a russian national he was trying to buy quote a series of f-16 ab air defense fighter manuals being sold on ebay However, the problem is the sale of these types of materials is restricted by law, specifically the Arms Export Control Act and the International Traffic and Arms Regulations. So because he was buying these and having them shipped to Russia, it was considered a violation of international arms treaties. Yes! Wow. That's hilarious. Wow. That's I violated an arms treaty for my video game. Yeah. But more importantly, that means that as an American... I believe I can legally go on eBay and buy F-16 AB air defense fighter ADF manuals. I will be searching this right and now. And Joe Biden can't that. even stop you. <laughs> I want these, honestly. They're probably pretty neat. I'm going to go smoke weed, drink whiskey, and read my fighter manuals, Mr. President. What are you going to do about yeah. it, Joe? Or Jimmy. Um, no, Jimmy we, can stop you. We tried to get Jimmy on the show this week, but <clears throat> he's just so dang busy. Um, I found it. It's $30. Oh, it's on a CD. He, he's a big fan, though. We'll make it happen. Yeah. I mean, he's tiny, but he's a big, big heart. Uh, moving on, uh, we lost Ian to the dark verse of eBay. The, the nerdiest shit I could imagine. I, yeah. found, I found the technical manual, gen review, organizational maintenance description, USAFE PATH series F 16 AB aircraft. Oh, this is beautiful. It's you all, know what? I, yeah, I'm not going to buy it. Sorry, sort of on the CD. Was- uh, on this trip uh, that we're going down here, I we just finished uh, For All Mankind, which excellent show. Everyone should watch it. Um, I really want to do some printouts of like some of the Apollo manuals that they like strap to their yeah. legs and stuff, and like the reference. You can build the computer kit and have a working flight computer. They're expensive, oh, but cool. I thought that would be cool. Um, Chris, did you have something to add, sir? Or are you? No, this is amazing, and I love it. Okay, perfect. I've, I just, it's so good. It's so fucking good. Um, update to the story. Last week we talked about the Ukraine warehouse that was packed with uh, thousands of PS4s. It was labeled as a Bitcoin mining operation, but lo and behold, <laughs> we found out that they were actually a FIFA Ultimate Team bot farm because. Ugh. That's right. You didn't think it could get worse, did you? <laughs> it's somehow worse. And it that means what they were doing was actually illegal. Correct? Cuz they were I guess is it illegal? To... It's against it's against uh the FIFA games as terms of service. Yeah, I guess that's true. Unless they have so, 4000 so people kinda. with different accounts. <laughs> yeah. Um you guys employ 4 employ 4000 people I... to sit at home? I hate that they're called yeah. foot coins. That's gross. No, that's not. Is it F U F U T? -T. What's going on? Because it's it's also it's 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 football universal team, right? Ultimate team. Football ultimate team. Foot coins are gross. It's either foot coin or foot coin. Either way, (laughs) not great. We should we should get into the foot coin market, guys. Um. Wow. We're gonna get a wiki foot. Wiki foot. (laughs) That's very good. That's what they're where all the cards are. Um, it says they also found 500 video cards, 50 processors, draft documentation on electronic consumption. Draft documentation. Oh, no. uh, Finally, I mean, this is a part of a huge problem, which is the FIFA Ultimate Team black market stuff. I mean, they've been talking about this. That was that that employee was selling stuff too a while back, right? He he made yeah. allegedly millions of dollars <laughs> selling stuff. Yeah. Yep. Allegedly. Yeah, that's crazy. Um, yeah, I just wanted to update everyone on that because I think that's because it rules. This picture is so good with this guy's blurred out face. Ugh. 
It's, I mean, it just looks like a hydroponics farm, but it's PS4s. Yes. It must be so hot in there. And it smells oh. like like foot cold. And one guy's playing God of War, or something. Oh <laughs> that guy's playing Galaga. <laughs> Man, nice Avengers just... reference. Thanks. I watched it recently. Um, <laughs> next news story. I I real quick about the Steam Deck pre-order numbers. Did either of you look at this story? No, I don't no. care. Okay, let's play. Let's play a little game. So basically, somebody found out that um, they can peer at the HTML behind the Steam webpage and get an idea of how many people have pre-ordered the Steam Deck, hmm. um, which uh, I believe this is this, this. I think this is maybe the day after that they got these numbers. Um, it does not have the numbers for the four hundred dollar model with the sixty four gigabytes, but it does have for the. 256 and the 512. So in the first day, how many pre-orders for the Steam Deck total do you think came across North America, the UK, and the EU? Will, what's your guess? For uh, this is all versions of Steam Deck except for, for the 499. Uh, except for the except for the base 400. The base 400. Uh, I will say 350,000. Is that too Chris, many or too that? low? That's too many, my man. Um, slot me down for sixty-nine thousand. Uh, correct answer is uh, over a hundred and ten thousand. I wasn't that in off. The first day. I I think you're my, you, my, you like my Nintendo gen, numbers. My yeah, genuine guess was was seventy thousand. So I just yeah. went down one because I I was gonna seventy five. I was like, that's too many. I'm shocked that it's uh, one hundred ten thousand. That's buck wild. Yeah. So that is seventy one thousand for the five twelve gigabyte, which is the top model, um, and thirty three thousand uh, of those were the two hundred sixty five gigabyte model. I'm just gonna assume that the lower version probably had another twenty. So let's say about one hundred thirty thousand pre orders on that first day. That's honestly that's a lot higher than I was expecting because. Even when you think about the Vive, even when you think about the Steam Link, there was not a lot of enthusiasm, and that kind of rolls into this release. So I've seen a lot of people pre-ordering uh, and posting it on Twitter. And I mean, this is kind of crazy. What's your What's your guys' take on that? What What's your take on the Steam Deck fan reaction and pre-order reaction? Um, I think people's reaction of this is a sort of a tangent, but people's reaction of, oh, Nintendo, you effed up, all that sort of stuff is kind of pointed wrong. Uh, I think I think it's good Valve is entering this competition space, but I don't think it affects Nintendo really at all. Um, uh, that aside, I think yeah. this thing looks really cool. I definitely want to check it out. Um, I'd be interested in getting one eventually. Uh, I have no use for one right now, mm -hmm. um, yeah. but uh, I think it's neat. I think they're, I like that Valve's trying, trying new stuff. Yep. I can't get my hands on a PlayStation 5 still or an Xbox. I, although I haven't been trying that hard for the Xbox. Uh so I won't be buying this yet. I might get it eventually. Um I, I, I agree with Will. I don't think this matters to Nintendo at all, but I do think that it is Nintendo's fault. Um because yeah. so like like Valve was probably going to do this no matter what. Um but uh Nintendo's hesitance to say, hey, we're making a Switch Pro and Nintendo's lack of like like everyone, everyone is so confident they're making one, but they just keep saying no. Uh, but everyone, like, there's just such such confidence across the entire industry that I think people, there's there's probably a lot of people that have debated buying a Switch or another Switch, or whatever the fuck it is, and are like, no, I'll wait. And then this finally comes out, and they're like, well, I was waiting anyway. Yeah. yeah. Plus, plus, we talked about how if and this thing also if, plays Stardew Valley. So what's what else do you need a yeah. Switch for? It's true. We, we talked about how if you don't have a gaming PC and you don't have a lot of money, it I honestly I would argue it makes a lot more sense to buy a five hundred dollar Steam Deck than it does to try and build a budget gaming PC plus monitor for five hundred dollars. We said the same thing on uh or on the monitor. Yeah. But that's a good that's a good segue into uh another story, which is very, very rare and surprising statement from the Nintendo Company li Limited official Twitter account. I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna tweet this. I'm I'm gonna quote this directly. Okay, ready? Quote. A news report on July 15th, 2020, JST, which I guess is Japanese Standard Time, claimed that the profit margin of the Nintendo Switch OLED model would increase compared to the Nintendo Switch. 
to ensure correct understanding among our investors and customers, we want to make clear that the claim is incorrect. We also want to clarify that we just announced the Nintendo Switch OLED model will launch in October 2021, and we have no plans for launching any other model at this time. That's a bit crazy for them to come out and just clearly state yes. it. So this tweet is weird. It's weird yeah. as fuck because they never tweet official. Like they, they don't like this. This account does not get like used much. Ever. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, when it tweets, it's always in Japanese and it's always, you know, very like serious. Or something like that. This it's just so bizarre. And I think that like. People are talking less about the switch, be switch pro because the OLED model. But then as soon as you say this, everyone's like, well, that's weird. It, 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 why do they feel the need to deny it so bad? Yeah. I know that sounds very conspiracy theorist and like, what are they hiding? But it's, it is very weird. I think, I think, it, they, I think they kind of said it in there. They said investors. I think they're worried about investors getting their hopes up and thinking, oh, there's going to be a lot more profit coming because there's a higher markup on the, uh, on the OLED model. And they've got a new, uh, switch pro coming you know next year and it's going to kill and i think this is them kind of get ahead of it saying whoa 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 don't ramp up your projections yeah. and expect too much from us you know and is get, that because get, the, get the, the, the switch pro might not make next year uh, i think it's i i'm going to take them at their word it's because they do not have a switch pro planned at this point in time yeah they, they only just have don't the have switch one. two plan so i mean I at mean, some point will that's got that is the case I mean, they, I mean, but they specifically said we have no more nintendo switch models they said quote we time. have have quote have no plans for launching any, any other, other model, model at this time so switch 2 wouldn't be a model of the switch one so that, that is yeah. technically but true they could just go could to the be, next console yeah but, I, I, but again I, I don't think that's I, this, how, how this much, seems much, like what? a legal thing somewhat like they had it, like it, ha it, it has big legalese um, energy as yeah. someone who i think been... they're, i think they're trying to i think they're worried the rumors are, are getting the investors too hyped and they're stepping in front of it saying <clears throat> these rumors are false yeah you know. the um corporate streams i've been working on every single one of them either has a disclosure slide at the beginning or hey go to this website because when you're interviewing people candidly about stocks you can't yeah you can't take any of those risks um even to yeah. a point where this guy was saying, uh, they were saying, hey, don't email me about that. Call me, because if you email me, we have to file to the FCC. Uh, so he oh. said, call me and tell me, don't email it to me. Otherwise, that, they have to do that. And not in a nefarious way, but he's just like, yeah. yeah, if you email me, I have to go file it with the FCC or something. It's more inconvenient it crazy. for literally everyone. <laughs> yeah. yeah, which is just funny. Um, anyways, uh, I, yeah, I think that's interesting. I'm, you know, I'm happy with my Switch. I'm not, pa I'm not, I mean, yes, it's showing its age. I'm not, I'm not just crazy waiting for the next thing from Nintendo or whatever they're doing. It'd be nice to have it. It'd be cool. But I, I'm mm -hmm. not in that camp of like, oh, please, Nintendo, please announce something. Um, because I yeah. just, I really don't care. I, I, I am in the camp of like, I was waiting for a Super Switch. So I wasn't like. Because, like, in theory, it'd be very convenient for me to have two Switches, one for me, one for Victoria. But, like, in, I guess I, I mean, I guess I just won't. I guess I'll just wait for the next console at this point, because fuck it. What year was Switch? 2017. 2017? 17. Yeah, because I was still in college. Um, yeah, I mean, like, I mean, four years is really not a lot, but Nintendo doesn't play by any fucking rules. No. Yeah, I think, I think for me, it's a balancing act where they're releasing games for the Switch. And it's kind of a balancing act of how unique and interesting and well done is this game like Breath of the Wild versus how poorly does it run on the Switch. And I think for right now, the balancing act is leaning in the way of I'm enjoying this game despite the performance issues. But I fear that in the future, it's going to tip the other way, which is like, I would enjoy this game, but it runs and looks too bad. Like, David does bring up the point that they also had claimed they were not working on any additional models but prior to the OLED being announced. So, yeah, that yeah. is a very good point. And they don't give a fuck, dude. They did. They genuinely don't care because like they'll make their yeah. money and they drop. They drop stuff in random tweets like the yeah. OLED model. So, um, great. Probably. Yeah. Is, yeah, probably is the least thing. Most probably right. Yeah. Um, I wanted to 
run through a couple game announcements. There was a EA Play thing today where they announced that new FMV Codemasters racing game, yeah, which seems pretty I, interesting. I look, I've played grid games before. They're not that great. The driving doesn't feel good. But if you're going to make a cheesy FMV storyline to go with yeah. the, the, the mediocre driving game, I may just have to play it. I thought it seemed so, pretty cool. One, one of my friends who like, knows racing games somewhat uh, tweeted in response to that, nobody asked for it, everybody horny for it. <laughs> yeah. I think yep. I, yeah. I was watching the Next Lander stream and Vinny w- kind of wished, he was like, I wish like, the, the guy drove up and he's like, I can't race anymore. And then one of the guys from the pit crew is like, I'll do it. And then he's just like, <laughs> from pit crew to victory. It's like, that would be the ultimate FMV. I, I will um, say, I, I, they, there are games that I've tried to do this, like F1 uh, series has tried to do this slowly, like like a lot of the EA games have done, where it's like, oh, the story mode is that you're playing a protagonist and you have to work your way through, you know, and you have these little like story moments and story beats. Oh, a reporter's interviewing, what do you say? And from what I can tell, they're not doing that with this. There's literally just a cast of racers who are all in this season together like real f1 and they all have unique personalities and some of them get along and some of them do not and (laughs) they start throwing punches like an f1 they start throwing punches and it's like okay yeah like there was an incident i want to say two years ago where basically the guy in first place got into a tangle with a guy that was trying to unlap himself and at the end of the race the guy was just like what's your problem man he started pushing him and then he like tried to punch him and they were just like whoa 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 awesome (laughs) yeah yeah, oh, it's, it's fantastic. You said, you, you said there's this trend in games, and he's you're talking about like uh, storylines and sports games. And I thought you were going to talk about FMV making a, 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 a resurgence. And I, because when because when this tweet, everyone started retweeting that fucking image of the dog from Ace Combat. <laughs> <laughs> the NG dog. Quantum Break. I love yeah, that boy. You know, all sorts of stuff. They're trying it. They're trying. The, the um, Ace Combat dog fucking rules. Yeah. Jeez. Uh, yeah, so they also announced that Dicey Draw, Luck Your Draw, Luck of the Draw game that looked like a Tim Burton movie. I thought that seemed pretty interesting. And then they also announced the Dead Space remake. Um, I believe they confirmed it's a remake. I watched the trailer and having played it last year, they showed off several rooms that were from the first game. So, uh, that's interesting. I'll I'll definitely check that out when it comes out. Um, I really like Dead Space 1 frantically d- dragging files into recycling yes. bins. <laughs> yeah. I want oh, that Callisto pro- protocol looks cool. Set in um, the PUBG universe. Well. I know the future future is now. Speaking of PUBG, new animated Netflix show. Is it Netflix specifically? Uh, yes, I am not sure. But... It's a new animated show of PUBG coming from the director of the Castlevania anime. Um, listen, I watched the first Almost first season of that Castlevania show. It was pretty good. Yes. This one is the um, uh, different case of nobody asked for it, nobody horny for it. What? Why is it saying the gray? Is this guy directed Liam Neeson, the gray? Liam Neeson's the gray? I love that Oh, movie. but the opposite. The opposite. I wasn't paying attention. You may have already talked about this. District 9 director Neil Blomkamp is working on a AAA multiplayer shooter. I did. I think that's... That, that director, look, look, Neil Blomkamp. I was a big fan of him before District 9 came out. He had some fantastic short movies. He has a great eye for design and for cinematography and in some cases editing, but he does not do great at story. No. Um, and he's, he's, he's a lot like Zack Snyder, very talented in some areas. Writing is not one of them. So I, I am curious about this. I think that's I think very it'll kind have a, of Zack Snyder, but okay. <laughs> I, think, I think it'll have a great look. But I'm worried. I want. I, I need somebody. Uh, I need a couple co-pilots on this. Yeah, I, I agree. I think. I mean, District Nine's great. He did those ODST things uh, back before ODST came out. Those were really good. It was three. It was uh, three. Was it three? Yeah, because they yeah, were they were oh, trying to right. Master Chief when he's coming into land. And, yeah. Good the boot, man. Wait, <laughs> wait, that was that was the District Nine guy. Yeah. That was Neil Blomkamp. Oh my god. Yeah, that was, uh, that was those so were really good. good. Um. So oh, I it, fucking love District yeah. 9. So uh, I'm, District I'm 9 is incredible. We, I'm sorry, just time out. Can we pause the podcast real quick and just watch that 10 minutes real quick? Because it is no, so I don't good. have time for that. It's incredible. Um, <laughs> District 9 is great. Elysium. Uh, and I never saw Chappie or... Didn't he Man. have a new one? No. I, he had a bunch of short stuff. 
Uh, I didn't watch Chappie. I actually I think Elysium is pretty good. Uh, uh, yeah, Elysium is pretty good, but I like the the, no the I like the sense. dichotomy yeah. of uh, Elysium is cool. It's kind of it's it's up there with Snowpiercer. It's just D- dumb District Nine was work. a movie that came out where I was like, I've never seen a movie like this. It is yeah, doing yeah. things I didn't know movies were allowed yeah. to do. Yeah, District, District Nine. Just to be clear, District Nine still has flaws, but it's so good that you forget the flaws. Like halfway through the movie, they just completely drop the documentary format. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And it's just and like it becomes an action movie, and it's yeah, still yeah. fucking rule. And it's still really God, good. But I want to go watch District Nine now. Yeah. That movie's so fucking. Yeah, oh, it's so yeah, good. There, there is like a there was like a discourse in like the film community. I talked about this in the Save the Discord. Um, when that movie came out, people were like, "Why is this?" Well, it's so weird that it would, that they would do this in Johannesburg, and it's unrealistic that the aliens would go to Johannesburg. Why wouldn't they go to New York or London? Because fucking aliens give a shit about what. Yeah, they don't care. care which city on Earth is the coolest. Um, but uh, yeah, it's just fucking. Oh, it's it's just not oh, so good. So good. Yeah. Um, but uh, let's talk about the, uh, the the PUBG thing real fast. Um, sorry, you. This is by the guy that did the gray. Because if, no, if so, that actually makes me a little no, more it, interested. No, it said something about the gray. That's why I was confused. Like well, it, it, if he also did the gray, that actually makes me a little more interested because, like, that is, I mean, that is like a movie about surviving the wilderness. It's also my number one way to die. It's a pretty good that that ending in that movie is good. That is, I've said before, that's the way it, I would prefer to die. I would uh, prefer to die fighting a pack of wolves, taking down a couple of them, and then being mauled by the rest. He was executive that, producer that, on the gray. That is the full human experience. You die a cold, alone, and afraid. <laughs> wow, was, this, guy, this guy's got some hits. Also, uh, he was on Killing Them Softly. I'm not sure what his role on that was, but also executive Dread. Producer. Urban. Ooh, this guy's got this guy knows what he's doing. Yeah, I mean, he's, I already he's knew he's that executive producer on all of these. Okay, I'm, so I'm on his doing... IMDb page. Well, fine. honestly, that I mean that means that shows me like with Lisa Dread, like he has some and Castlevania, he has a decent amount of like propriety yeah, and taking. It's, it's hard to be an executive producer, and turning it into cool stuff. Yep. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I always get upset when they regulate certain people to executive producer because you're like, just because you're a good director doesn't mean you know what you're doing. <laughs> like, yes, I've met yes, some yes. awful executive director uh, producers. That's the thing where it's like, ha- when you see EP, EP names on on shit. Half of them didn't do ever anything, and half of them did fucking so much bullshit. Yeah, yeah. Um, sweet. Uh, finally, what else we got here? Um, oh, that that was leading up to they announced that Tom Clancy's X Defiant game that looks mad, and I I think the game looks good. I just don't like the punk cyberpunk weird gameplay of it. I think that's a little stupid for a Tom Clancy thing. It looks like, why terrible. put Tom I mean, Clancy they- on it? It's it's not Tom Clancy at all. It's, yeah, it's. Ugh. I don't know why they do that. Anyways, um, is there? Do you want to talk Clancy about this blockchain? Like uh, no, it's just um, IGDA, which is the International Game Developers Association, basically came together. They put out a statement saying, "Hey, we should stop all blockchain activity in games that includes uh, cryptocurrency, that includes NFTs, or any other use of the blockchain, because essentially the argument is that the blockchain, the way it works, is the chain always has to be up." It gets larger and larger with more transactions, and that just ends up soaking up a lot of energy usage for literally sustenance. It's it's kind of like a bank ledger that has to be plugged into the wall 24-7, and the more transactions that go in the bank ledger, the more power-hungry it gets. Yeah. That's not a bad analogy. That's pretty good. Yeah. Uh, and pretty then good. in other news, Skull and Bones still not out. So Skull uh... and Bones. Skull and Bones. Talking about Skull and Bones. It's too big to fail. I... <laughs> fucking love everything to do with this game that's never coming out i i'm gonna watch the fucking show i'm gonna i'm gonna give a weekly write-up on it i'm so hyped for skull and bones to fail we should have done a skull and bones podcast searching for skull and bones skull and boners where school oh. win well, bones so well, we can still start that no news has come out since i know welcome this is the news this is the news um that's a good idea we should do (laughs) it's gaming news um i think that's it for news there was also the 10 cent stuff but i really don't care about it yeah um folks which means we're moving into the final section of this show which means we get to pick games for the sub pixel rating system i'm going first because i didn't get to last time yeah and i'm stuck between two games and do we want a good game or a good game or a bad game? Well, 
Okay, well, let's let's look at... We got 41 games on the list. The middle of the list is Shadow of the Colossus, which means the perfect five is Shadow of the Colossus or Star Wars Battlefront. I think we need a bad game. I genuinely forgot this was part of y'all's podcast. Yeah. Should we read down the list? <laughs> oh, yeah, let me read uh, the list. Could you send me the list? Yes. I got that. I got that if you want to read Cool. It. Number one, Outer Wilds. Number two, Yakuza 0. Number three, The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Number four, Kingdom Hearts 2. Number five, Titanfall 2. Number six, Factorio. Seven, Doom 1993. Eight, Animal Crossing. Nine, Half-Life. Ten, A Star Wars. Knights of the Old Republic. Eleven, Red Dead Redemption. Twelve, Firewatch. Thirteen, Mirror's Edge. Fourteen, <laughs> Ghost of Tsushima. Fifteen, Control. Sixteen, Kerbal Space Program. Seventeen, Mass Effect. Two... 18 Cuphead, 19 Prey 2017, 20 Shadow of the Colossus, 21 Star Wars Battlefront 2004, 22 Mario Tennis, 23 Grand Theft Auto 5, 24 Horizon Zero Dawn, 25 Battlefield 1943, 26 Middle Dash Earth colon Shadow of Mordor, 27 The Outer Worlds, 28 Death Stranding, 29 Gone Home, 30 Halo 4, 31 Fallout 4, 32 No Man's Sky, 33 Daisy, 34 Mario Party 9, 35 Donkey Kong 64, 36 Watch Dogs Legion, 37 Ghost of Recon Wildlands, 38 Brink, 39 Kingdom Hearts 3, 40 Cyberpunk 2077, 41 Worst Game of All Time, according to Subpixels, Big Rigs Over the Road Racing. Hey, I think your list has gotten too bloated. We're getting to fifty. It's still pretty good. It's still pretty good. Getting to fifty. Um, uh, I'm glad. I'm glad that Elise nominated a genuinely good game. Um, the statement that Breath of the Wild is a better game than Kingdom Hearts Two is one of the most <laughs> insane things I think that has ever been said. I know Chris famously doesn't like Legend of Zelda: Breath of the Wild. Yeah, sure. Let's go with that thing, and not the fact that Kingdom Hearts Two is are is inarguably one of the best games of all time. Uh, I'd have to play it. Uh, exactly. In in I don't want to see your face. Have you beaten Kingdom Hearts two? I played ten hours of Kingdom Hearts. Yeah, shut the fuck up. Awful. We can get Outer Wilds out of number one. It's not number one. It's it's lower. Outer Wilds is lower. It needs to Wait, be lower. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Is your argument that Kingdom Hearts two can't be that good because Kingdom Hearts three is bad? I was on the podcast last week. At least made a very fantastic okay. argument. Oh, no, no, I just I just need to make sure that you weren't under the impression that yeah. two and three are neither of us have played two no, 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 no. and okay. Elise okay. was so diehard about it. She convinced us it was number she, four. I'll tell you this, just so we can get off the topic. She convinced me because she was saying all these things that are amazing. And in my head, I'm going, well, that was awful in Kingdom Hearts 3. And so the whole by the end of it, I was going, what if Kingdom Hearts 3, all the things I hated about it were actually good? And I was like, well, then it would have been a great game. Hey, you Ian, know, and that's very uh, convincing. Imagine all those things in Kingdom Hearts 3 that are terrible. Uh, that were good in Cage 2, you also waited 13 and a half years for. <laughs> <laughs> That's why it's near the bottom. Ian, oh, we, gonna do, yeah. Ian we should do a Kingdom Hearts 2 Let's Play. No. Um, <laughs> my first Kingdom Hearts. My first Kingdom Hearts 2. <laughs> I already yeah. did that. I already did that. It was awful. No, you did three. And you didn't do anything. <laughs> That's yeah. a shot. Oh, I did a video. No. There There's no a thumbnail. Video. Yeah, no, I did the video. I did. It was a spotlight, oh, yeah, basically yeah, insulting yeah, yeah. Kingdom Hearts fans. But yeah. you never used the great Mario <laughs> thumbnail. There's a thumbnail. I've seen it. Or Mario, uh, Mickey Mouse. Um, Mickey Mouse. Okay, I, if if that's the case, I got to think of a bad game. I had two good games. Um, I can go. Yeah, you go. <sighs> Folks, we need to talk about Red Dead Redemption 2. Ugh. Look, um, I enjoyed Red Dead Redemption. I actually played it. I want to say like 2015 or 2016, um, and which was a couple years late, but I, I still really enjoyed it. I like Rockstar games. I was very excited for Red Dead Redemption 2. I've talked about it before how I literally bought, I upgraded to an Xbox One X because I wanted to play Red Dead Redemption 2 as best as I could on release day. And this game was very disappointing to me. Um, I, I think the world is great and they have a lot of great characters and they do a lot of really cool design decisions like how... There are cutscenes, but the transition from gameplay to cutscene is seamless. Like you'll just walk into an area and then the camera will slowly swoop in and it becomes the cutscene. Um, there's a lot of great like NPC actions around there. The environment's great. I feel like I've already said that, but combat never feels amazing in Rockstar. It feels serviceable, but it never feels amazing. Same in Red Dead Redemption 2. Their mission structure, which is a lot of just like, I don't want to say generic, but it feels like ho-hum set pieces where it's just a checklist. It's like, hey, go over here and do this. Okay, now uh, hop on the train. Okay, now do this, kill these wave of enemies. Okay, now do this. It feels awful, especially in a sandbox game. You know, um, I, I had a similar experience to Ben Pack on 
giant bomb, like literally the exact same experience as him, which is there's a mission. And at the beginning of the mission, they say, go buy a sniper rifle. And you go to Valentine and you buy a sniper rifle and you That's walk out of the, store. Early in the game. But yeah, but you walk out of the store and, and then enemies attack you and you are standing next to a building with a ladder on it and you go, great, I'm going to climb this ladder to the top of this building and I'm going to shoot them. And as soon as you start to climb the ladder, it fails you for the mission and it says you have gone out of the mission area and they expect you to just treat it like a normal combat in the streets, like a generic, very confined action set piece. And it's so frustrating in this game because they have made an incredible sandbox, but every time you try and do story content, it feels like they are just not utilizing the sandbox well enough. They're constricting you and confining you. And then there's all sorts of small decisions, like the whole romp to the island just felt like stupid because it just super confined you to these missions, these story missions. Um, it also, the fact that picking up items just becomes this, like, I got to look at an item and then like look around for the interact. Okay, I've got the interact. Okay, now I'm going to do the whole reach down and grab it and pull it. And I get very tired after 40, 50 hours. Red Dead Redemption 2, just a very disappointing game for me. I'm not sure where I put it, but it's towards the bottom of the list. I want to hear your guys' thoughts. It's it's a rare example of too much game. There's just too yeah. much game. And I'm and I'm a I'm a person with a job and a life. Like yeah. I just I don't have time for that kind of fucking bullshit. And it's not something that like if I if I put down I put down RuneScape for a week, nothing has fucking changed. I can still click the game. Like it's it's a game where I click around. Uh if I put down a JRPG or a Red Dead for a week, I pick controller up. I have no clue what the fuck is going on. And I've yeah. forgotten how to how to do it, how to do the button. And like it'll oh, come yeah, back. The control, like, the controls are awful. They're, they're, they're not great. They have so I many things mapped to different control. buttons, but it doesn't make a lot of sense. Like I, I remember I feel like there's one button on the controller that is mapped to like three different things. So you can accidentally like pet your horse, shoot your horse, or like talk to a stranger with the same button. It's just weird stuff like that. Where no, yeah, you're I right. Because I do remember I would go to talk to a stranger and occasionally just deck them in the face. Yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> it's just so it's 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 such an like a, a game with a lot of vision, and it has a lot of effort put into it, and that shows in a lot of places. But I think overall it falters. Will I know you're dying to uh, to fight us? I loved every second of Red Dead Redemption Two. I oh, think it's a no. fantastic game. I I. I hesitate to say I liked it more than one. Uh, one is an incredible game. Um, I don't think the story was as good as one, but yeah, I, I really enjoyed yeah. it. I enjoyed all the aspects of it. I completely understand the arguments. Uh, I think it was just a game for me. I like all of that stuff. Um, I, <clears throat> I, I, I feel like the only thing I didn't like about the game is they never utilized the entire map. Like it was just there to be the multiplayer map and include the original area. I don't know why they never really yes. did anything with it, but um, yeah, I really like that game. Uh, I, yeah, fantastic. I um, I think the game peaks at the uh, mission where you uh, go into the house and you have the cool walk up shot with all the guys lined up. Yeah, that's yeah. pretty good. I I wouldn't say. I, I definitely there think it's downhill. Yeah, that's that's by far the best mission, but I feel like getting to that point, I was starting to lose yeah. it. I think Arthur's story is really, especially if you play him as an honest root and tootin' good guy, not a root and tootin' good guy, but a somewhat good mor moral guy. I think his story yeah. is absolutely crushing and yes. good. Um, that second half of that game is kind of brutal with that stuff him sitting next to that nun and having the conversation is really good there's some hard hitting moments in that yeah. uh and I, not all of the epilogue the heart of the epilogue is good what they were intending and going for and that uh yeah willie nelson song's really great uh yeah, yeah. uh the, the choice by the way to have right? to have uh, music with lyrics in that game yeah bizarre <laughs> happens what, yeah. three two two or three times it's two or three yeah so I, I think that's good as someone who a lot of people complained about missing story moments and stuff in this game and like uh i remember dan reichert saying he missed a whole musical section because he he raced across the not on a road or something i will say um, i never got the uh jose gonzalez thing in the first oh, game really? riding to mexico i heard about that when oh. people 
when Red Dead Redemption 2 I first that started was a missable out. thing. I, yeah, I never had that, uh, the Mexico huh. runaway train thing. So um, I, I, I agree. I agree with like a majority of what you're saying about these great moments. But for me, those moments, they still hit pretty well. But it was a lot of swimming through crap to get to those moments. You yeah. know, and and I think if I had to place this on the list, I, I would put it at number 27 below Middle, Middle Earth, Shadow of Mordor, but above outer worlds and the reason why i say that is because there's still some interesting stuff in here but man by the time you get to the end of the game even for all the good moments there's just like you're saying there's too much game and a lot of it is mediocre sorry you said below or above middle earth shadow of mordor below middle earth shadow it is of not that, worse than middle earth shadow of mordor <laughs> that nemesis system man is insanely good i have tried it to play that so game good. four or five times and i cannot get into it <laughs> okay here's the thing with that fucking game i don't want to dig into this too deep that the nemesis system is great that's about it other than that it's just arkham asylum but but that's fine it's not a bad arkham asylum clone it's no, just no, no, like, no. it's, it's just like a good yeah it's a it's a good for its time, open world game, combat's good, world's good, etc. But then the Nemesis system, man, that just pulls you in. And that, that's the thing I have with Red Dead Redemption 2 is that I feel like it has a lot of good story moments and it's well done, but the length of that game and how much generic, mediocre content is in that game between those moments, that's why I would put it below Shadow Mortar. But where, where, would you, where would you counter with it? Who, me? Either. I, Either. I'm not going to get it where I want it, but... For your sake, I would put it above Horizon Zero Dawn. I would put it below Horizon Zero Dawn. Yeah, let's go with let's go with below Horizon Zero Dawn. I'm you okay think with that. it's worse than Horizon Zero Dawn? Yes, I do. God, you're that's actually insane. actually no. Because here's the thing: I'm not looking at Horizon Zero Dawn. I think that's misplaced. I I think it's worse than Grand Theft Auto Five, though. I'll concede to that, even though I don't agree. I also agree that it's worse than Grand Theft Auto Five. Even though I even though I like Red Dead 2 more than Grand Theft Auto 5, I understand that I just don't like Grand Theft Auto 5, and that is a good game for a lot of people. But you know what? Sorry, sorry, you're right. It yeah, it should go above Horizon Zero Dawn because it's I, I enjoyed it more than Horizon. So yeah. But you want to put it Horizon below Middle Earth. Earth. I know, because I think Horizon is misplaced. Yeah. I think Horizon should be much lower. So when I'm looking at should between those two, which should be first between the two of them, I think Red Dead. Above but Horizon. you still think it goes bull but so you think middle earth shadow mortar is above all of these no 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 I, I i think i think it should go below middle of earth shadow of mortar but at that moment when it came down to it we were just arguing horizon versus red dead right but if horizon if, horizon is is in the wrong place horizon should be much lower horizon should be down near middle of earth shadow of mortar so Middle of Earth, Shadow of Mordor. This is, this is the great thing about this list, is that it's completely out of order, so you gotta, like... It's like, where is it in the list, and then where is it in this chunk? No, because... You know? No, because here's all you've done. All you've done is make it so that eventually... So what you what you basically just told me is that the placement on this list doesn't fucking matter. Because <laughs> oh, it totally once, matters. Because once you hit 50, you're just gonna fix it. Well, so who gives a fuck? We're not sure what we're gonna do at 50. We've got some ideas. Okay, I don't care where it goes. I hate this list. <laughs> it's amazing. This is why I love it. <laughs> uh, it's, it. It's a it's a worse game than Horizon. It also does less for the franchise than Horizon, and that's sad. Um. So speaking of hating this list, Chris, what's your uh, nominee? Oh, we're doing three this week. Okay. Um. Let's see. Will, what's your what's your nominee? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Go ahead, Willie. I don't have a bad game. I have a good game. Sure, his sure, a good game. game. Metal Gear Solid 5. Sorry, Metal Gear Solid V. <laughs> it's not actually 5. They're going to release the 5 later. Man, see, okay, look. I, I played half of this game. I, I'm just taking over because you're typing. And you. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know how I feel about this game. I played a little bit of Metal Gear Solid before the first one. I played probably half of it. And there's a lot of cool stuff in this game. But there's also a lot of like systems that are appealing but don't actually have any depth to them. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of stupid story stuff. There's a lot of stupid over the top cinematic scenes that are pointless, like you crawling through a, a hospital that's on fire that just takes way too long and is quite frankly not a good intro. <laughs> 
and it's just like I your opinions sometimes are genuinely you think okay wait a minute wild. so you think it's great to start a game with you like crawling through a burning hospital for like 30 accept, minutes I know I think it is acceptable for the fifth game in a fucking franchise technically it's it's more than that uh it's what actually the eighth because it came out Something after like that, yeah I mean, there's a bunch of acid eight. There's acid one and two and all that. That so. wasn't counting acid or ground zeros or anything like that. Um, whatever. I think it's scheduled for the fifth game in a fucking series to open with a long goddamn uh, story <laughs> beat. For fuck's sake! You, you you said it's a bad intro. It's it's, it's Kingdom the Hearts fifth lover. fucking game. <laughs> well, King, Kingdom Hearts two's intro. Is okay, bad. but wait a minute. Wait a minute. I, this is an, this is a genuine question. The dude that shows up at the hospital. You have no idea the the bad guy. You have no idea what that is or what's going on, right? That that has nothing to do with the previous Metal Gear games. The flame, at least guy? at that point in time. At least at that point in time, you yeah, have no idea. No, you know who it's, that uh, is. it's 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 Vulcan, isn't it? It's Vulcan from the third game. Yeah. Oh, you already know. He's that. very okay, recognized. Right. I mean, you don't know it. You know it's. It looks you, exactly you are, like him. You are yes. led to believe that via your knowledge on the Metal Gear series, yeah, because gotcha. this is the fifth game in the series. <laughs> it's still a bad way to open it. It's a you talked about Bioshock Infinite having an incredible opening, and it's because they're introducing you to this very interesting world, these crazy things going on, and then you're exploring it, and you start to do these like little choice things, interacting with NPCs, and this is literally just like story dump on a cutscene, very well cutscene made cutscene, but then just this like really laborious like stealth section it's not even like good metal gear solid stuff it's just like crawling so it's little things like that throughout the game where i'm just like i appreciate the effort but it's not quite not quite pulling it off for me yeah i would say metal gear solid 5 the phantom pain is a good 75 percent of a game that is missing it's the, it's the greatest incomplete game that's yeah, what I've it's the said, greatest right? incomplete game of all time it is one of if not the best stealth game of all time it has incredible quality of life improvements like infinite sprint um all sorts of things you can call in the base mechanics yeah. are really cool uh, it just everything is so well thought out and meshes together in such a great way that it's hard it's hard to accept that this game isn't perfect because it isn't because it just it didn't it didn't get there it it, it yeah. is mired down the last half of it by harder versions of levels you've already done um a, a, yeah like i said an incomplete story an incredibly hot side character um, um i just want to say Kaz, I, yeah kaz is hot <laughs> i did I did enjoy my time with this game, but to bring up another problem I had with it was I didn't feel like any of the environments and maybe only a majority of the bases and locations were not compelling at all. Huh. You know, they were See, just kind of like, all of it. here's, here's like a, here's like a generic Afghanistan. Here's like a generic See, jungle type thing. I, I do like, feel like the areas could have used more building out, but honestly, I feel that way with probably yeah. 98% of open worlds. Uh, and yeah, that's that's something to me that I always I've always I always prefer a, a, a well done level to yeah. a, to it to even a very good open world. And if the because... traversal was bad, I would be more aware of it being empty. But the traversal is good I, in that I'll game. I'll tell you one thing. I'd rather I'd rather ride around the fucking uh, Metal Gear Solid five map than Red Dead. I disagree with that. And I like horses plenty. Because I, I remember in Metal Gear Solid 5, it was a lot of like, okay, I'm going to ride around this like mostly empty environment and there's going to be checkpoints and bases. And every time there's one of those, I've got to like, let me do a like either a sneak thing or let me just try and take out the base or let me try and avoid it. And it felt like it was almost like a very short flow Sorry. chart. Maggie just sprinted <laughs> behind you. Uh, but it's, I, like a, it's like a very short, short flow chart because the environment is not varied or unique enough. Yeah, you know? I would agree, but I don't think that game's... Me that that game is meant to be played that way, but that's also not what it's meant. To, like you, that isn't an open world. You're just supposed to run around in like the Witcher yeah. or Red Dead it's, or something like that. A, like you're doing missions, yeah. you're landing at certain but, spots. But I mean, even that going from, from like a start point to, you know, from an infill point to the mission back to the X fill, it felt like you're going past a lot of like generic checkpoints and you basically have like two or three options to deal with it. And, and, that's just what I mean about the world is that I wasn't compelled at all by this world. And even a lot of the locations that you get to a mission location, it was kind of 50 50 as to whether it was an interesting, unique location or just like another generic camp. Yeah. I just think the gameplay in that point. game is so solid that it's, yeah. it's not like it's making up for that. Cause you have, they're very valid Fucking points. Enemies learn if you use a sniper 
and the the, the new the new yeah. sniper, and they'll start wearing helmets. Are you fucking kidding me? Yeah, yeah. it's just that's yeah. awesome. And what what was the other thing? You can uh, your horse can poop, and people can slip on it, and vehicles can slip on it, vehicles and then. There's the other if you play mu music from inside of a a bathroom if you play music en enemies will go like investigate isn't there like yeah, there's like, like some style. you can play music put music in a oh what is it I was just watching an old giant bomb where it came out and they were talking about it I can't remember what it is it's something like you can make like sexy lady noises in the bathroom and they'll like come investigate or something oh yeah. oh no no the diarrhea guy you can give yeah. you can give Johnny? people diarrhea in in the game or something. That's what it is. Um, anyways, uh, I I don't know where I would put it on this list. I think I would put it at I would put it new number eighteen. New number yeah. eighteen. I would put it. Wow. I would put it at. I oof, okay. Yeah. See, here's the thing. I like it more than Kerbal Space Program, personally, but I'm just not a huge Kerbal guy. Uh, I definitely don't like it as much as I like Control or Ghost of Tsushima. Um, I'll put it above Mass Effect 2. I'd put it above Kerbal, but you guys won't go for that because you're marks for Kerbal. I mean, I would put it above Kerbal. <laughs> okay, okay, I'll put it above Kerbal. I, I wouldn't put it above Kerbal. I know I, you I like it. I like 18. You wouldn't put your own child above Kerbal. You like 18? I'll agree to 18. I put Yakuza 0. <laughs> Actually, no, Yakuza 0 came first, but... Yeah. Yakuza 0 uh, is a perfect video game. Um, Should be number I, 11. <laughs> I'll settle for... Better than Cuphead. I'll settle for better than Mass Effect 2. It is. I don't know. It is. Because uh, here's the thing. I, I only played half of Metal Gear Solid 5. By the time I got to the halfway point, I was like, ah, I know what's going on here. And there's, there's is that, is that the only Metal Gear? You don't even you know the ending of Metal Gear Solid 5? He's the worst. I, he's, I know worst. enough of it. Um, from spoilers, etc. But, I, but uh, <laughs> did, did you beat four? Yeah, I've never beaten any of them. I played I half know. of them. I hate that so much. I'm not saying they're bad. <laughs> I just... <laughs> I didn't have PlayStations. I didn't have PlayStations okay, or that's, GameCube, that's so I didn't play them. That's, that's not your fault. Why haven't yeah. I let you borrow the collection? I may eventually, Free but I feel like games. I know enough. I know enough about them, and I've seen enough about them that it wouldn't. I don't think I need to play them. I don't that's think a, you that's know a statement enough. For myself. I think you think you know enough. Yes, I think that too. <sighs> I'm fine. I I I, I would fight for above Mass Effect two, but I don't think I'm gonna get it. So fine, below. I'll Mass play them after Kingdom Hearts two. <laughs> um, fine. Chris. What's your game? So unfortunately, Ian just threw a tremendous wrench into my plan because I, I have been good. I've been on this podcast multiple times and I have never subjected you guys. I haven't subjected you all to Transistor, have I? No, it is no. sitting in there, my there living are room. Two, oh, yeah, I need that back, by the way. No. Eventually, um, <laughs> you have to play that. Uh, there are two games that I consider to be not perfect. Uh, the, only, the closest game that approaches perfect is Shadow of the Colossus. Um, even yeah, though it's not my favorite game, uh, I, Yakuza Zero is a damn good nod. I would give that a, a ninety, at, though, not a not a ninety five. Ninety five is the highest grade you can get in a, as a game on my scale. Um, eventually, a game will get. Me, is this the is this the Chris rating? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, there are two games that have ninety fives on my scale. Uh, one is Transistor. I w won't do that here because I don't think Ian's played it, and I know no. Rebecca was not uh, So I'm going to hit you with the other game that uh, uh, is fundamental to who I am as a as a video game person, uh, and that's Metal Gear Solid Three Snake <laughs> Eater. <laughs> what a thrill! I'm this just so game happy. Is fucking good. Oh, it's so I thought you were going to say the League of Legends. So no, no it's already in the I, mobile quarantine zone. I tried to do that last time. You guys wouldn't let me do it. I have not played this game. I know a little bit yeah, about it, so I'm just oh. I'm just gonna moderate. I'm just gonna moderate this. So so Chris, give us the pitch of this game and then tell us where you put it. This is my second favorite game of all time. My favorite game of all time is Transistor. This is a better game than Transistor, objectively. Subjectively, I disagree, but objectively, this is a better game than Transistor. Uh, it's fucking great. Uh, it does things that at the time when I was playing it as a kid, I didn't think once again was possible in a video game. The end fight is what I'm referring to specifically, mm -hmm. among other things. There's mechanics in this game that are absolutely fucking brilliant. Uh, it's well written. It's cool as fuck. Uh, it features uh, six uh, twelve shouts more than enough to kill anything that moves. 
uh the line the lines are awesome the music kicks ass the fucking ladder scene is the best thing that's ever happened in a video game fuck you if you disagree um all the characters are great are you queuing up snake eater i muted it on the stream so we don't get a takedown <laughs> <laughs> only we can this, hear it we're listening to the snake eater song right now the one that plays as you walk up as you go up the ladder walk up the ladder whatever climb the ladder um and it fucks because it's awesome. Oh, it's um, so good. I love this game. It, it the the CQC the the controls of it are so fucking good, especially for the time. I mean, like I'm sure it wouldn't hold up comparatively now to like what we're used to, but for the fucking time, it was insanely smooth feeling. I will say, Sorry, I, I'm, I, I'm, I was come, I'm blown away. The song is just it's so my how entirely. much how much James Bond did he watch before that song? That's oh, the thing. Uh, games should have bond songs it's snake eater and death loop that's it chris i played two three and four in 2018 before i got my job at reward the fan and i also referenced that on the stream tonight three was the only one i played through start to finish without ever checking a guide it played yes. oh, so yeah. well. I, I will say that actually as a kid, I remember because I used to be a huge like I'd go on game FAQs and stuff like that. I I beat that game in I had it over the summer. I played that game. I think it was I played it like three days nonstop because I was a fucking nerd. Um <laughs> and uh I I never like had to, I never went and like looked at cheats or any like looked for like stuff like that. I just I literally just sat down and just experienced the fucking video game and it was glorious. Yeah, there's still moments where like stuff messes up or like it, you know it's an older game, but yeah, playing through that game in modern times was super easy and seamless. It wasn't like one or two where it's like I have to remember. Oh, this was a PS2. What are, what are the controls? Yeah, and stuff. This item is like, very important. Don't yeah. waste it. Yeah. And even even four. If, I mean, four. I didn't really have to check a guide either. But yeah, definitely. I have mixed opinions about four. That's why I didn't bring it up. Yeah, four's. Uh, is it... So where where's it going? Four's a movie. <sighs> I mean, I'll put it anywhere. <laughs> You want a okay, new number I, one? I'll put it there. I'll put it I, there. Here's the thing. For me, it's better than every single game on this list. Oh. Um, I mean, not no, yet because it's zero, but... I would say the only games yeah, that I think thing. can rival it in quality are Yakuza 0 and Kingdom Hearts 2. And and I put... Oh, no. I, I didn't put Firewatch on here. Jake did. Wow. Um, I personally think it's better than Yakuza 0. I... Look... Look, look, I've loved oh. the Yakuza series since I was a kid playing Metal Gear Solid. That's why I played Yakuza 2 and then went back and had to play Yakuza 1. Don't worry about it. Um, I fucking adore Yakuza. Metal Gear Solid 3 is a better video game. I don't and know, man. Zero it, it, is zero very, very is, good. Zero is Zero isn't a perfect game, but it is the best possible game that could have been made with the Yakuza franchise. They cannot yeah. do better than that. They will not do better. They haven't done better prior. Even though Yakuza 7 Like a Dragon kicks the fucking ass, Yakuza 0 is the perfect Yakuza game. I, yeah. Like I like Red Dead, it is a lot of game, but like 99% of it. That's is a lot of game. Really good. Is really good. Yeah, Yakuza 0 is So that's I look, again, I've not played Metal Gear Solid 3. I'm deferring to you guys. I think the only game on this list that I would fight to be above it is Yakuza 0. Well, I think we can settle this uh, in a in a civil manner. I, I think you, we'll have a way of deciding. Yeah, this. new number one. Okay, yeah. I'm down. Uh, I what, what, what is your genuine opinion on on the Yakuza versus Metal Gear Solid? I so I played both of them within the last three years. I and Yaku, Yakuza Zero is just so good. I, I honestly feel like this is actually inadvertently a really, really good comparison of games because both of them are. Yeah. No, 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 not your system. The whole list, but, yeah, the whole list. <laughs> the, concept, yeah. the concept of Yakuza versus Metal Gear Solid because they're both games that ha have incredibly, ridiculously serious stories with goofy bullshit thrown in, yep. like a, a, as the padding. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh... I'm going to say Yakuza 0 is a better game. It's more fun. Yeah. I would, so what that means... You know, not to bring up the argument, but I would go play Yakuza 0 right now. 
Oh no, I would go play Stinky to right now too. <laughs> Just load up the ladder. But uh, I do like the idea of it, Metal Gear Solid the Three, first, the first jungle mission, though. Oh my god, it's such a good introduction. I do, I do like MGS Three is the new number three. That is very good. Very um, small argument. However, but... I I will I will give you the counterpoint. You can wear uh, American flag face paint in <laughs> Metal Gear Solid Three. You How about can also wear? Can I flip? Half a, can America we flip a coin? I have a crazy idea. I have a crazy idea. All right. I know we're getting a little late here, but I I think we put Metal Gear Solid Three at number one, Yakuza Zero at number two, and we quickly remove, we quickly move Outer Wilds to a new spot. Uh, uh, oh, I'm into that. I would do that. So hold on, hold on. The play here is, you could MGS number one MGS Three. Okay. Number two Yakuza, Outer Wilds. We do a quick move. Okay, here's what I would propose. We all give a number for Outer Wilds. It's the average between those three numbers. <laughs> that's it. That's how it works. Oh, that's evil. Yeah. I think I'm okay with that. Uh, again, <laughs> look, I love my hot takes, but I take this rating system very seriously. So <laughs> I'm not, I can't. That, that's the hottest take of all. Okay, so we'll each say a number at the same time. Okay, wait a minute, wait a though. I, I just want to say, Chris, I don't know if you watched the episode, but I ultimately judged Mass Effect 2 after I played it, and I moved it to exactly where it was. I... <laughs> Is it really? Yes. Yeah. That's impressive. Yes. So, Also, um, Ian, I don't know you, if you saw you... this update, but Elise at least in the save data Discord officially said that Mass Effect 3 is better than Mass Effect 2. <laughs> See, Elise said that, and I honestly, I haven't. We stopped playing the remaster because one is actually really rough. Um, and I thought I, I, I started playing one the remake. I was like, it's not that, it's not that rough. And then it gets rougher, and I was like, oof. Um, but I, I honestly, I've had the opinion so long that two is the, the best game in that series. Uh, I think, I think she might be correct about that though. Um, oh, about three. Yeah, but I, I've oh. I've felt that two is the best one for a while. Okay, so they're going to say one. Wait, let's say our numbers here. Outer Wilds. Okay, give me a second. I got to look at this list. Okay. Outer Wilds. So you've already okay. You so I'm accounting for Outer Wilds being moved already. I've taken it out completely. Yeah. yeah. So we just want the number you want it at, and then we'll take the average of the three. Which okay. I don't know how that works, but. What? Add a, oh, you add them up and divide by three. I'm, I mean, divide by three. I literally just <laughs> yeah. figured it out as I said it. You oh, know why? So you know why that I was trying to figure that out? I was thinking, thinking of like halfway. two numbers and halfway. So. Do a median. Yeah. Uh, okay. Are we ready? I have, I, I have my number. Oh, should we write it down and fold um, it up? You think, or should ooh, we all just yeah, say I, it at the same time? I, I don't have anything local. Okay, so you, you know, say I do, it I do. and we'll. I, hold. I can write it. Oh, okay. Um. Okay. Give me a second. I'm not actually set yet but okay um oh boy this is too wait much what damage. number is it oh, I forgot. um uh, wait hold on if i put it at a number is it going to bump the one that's at that number you're up putting it uh, the one you're it, replacing it, goes down okay. yeah yeah it, of course yeah that makes the most sense yeah so if you say 24 then yeah. the current 24 becomes 25 I wrote one number and then I changed it. I'm locked. Well, I need you to. I need you to play Yakuza Seven, by the way. Oh, I, it's on the list. It's, I, 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 it's installed I need, on my Xbox. I need you to play it because it is just Dragon Quest, but it's also Yakuza. So, so I want to start it, but I want Karen to be there when I start it because she kind of likes okay. six. So. It's Victoria's favorite game of all time. Ooh. Okay, you guys ready? ready? One, yeah. two, three, show. Oh wow! I, I think that's twelve. I originally wrote 12. <laughs> oh my god, it's 12. I think it's 12. Yeah, no, you're right, it is. That's crazy. I'm okay with that. I wrote 16 Eight. because I think it's a better space game than Kerbal. It's a great game. Look, it's a great game. I think just some of the... the, some of the it's so well constructed that some of the flaws become super frustrating, even though they're not that big of a deal. Because of how well it's done, I just th I think I think it's fun. I think it's cool. I think it's unique. I don't think it's as good as people think it is. Mostly Zach. Yeah, it's a, it's a little it's a little overrated, but it's got it's 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 still number two. It fantastic. might be because for me it has Undertale effect. Where I when I finally got into playing it, everyone was like, "It's God's gift to creation." And I'm like, "It's fine. It's, it's a good game." Elise yeah. is not happy yeah. on the chat. <laughs> it's very good, but I just want to say 
it's number 12, but if you look at the 11 games ahead of it, every single one of them is a banger. At least, so Outer at least Wilds just, 2 can be a I'm banger. I'm just removing competition if you get Cage 2 in the top spot. <laughs> Cage it 2 will never be better than That's those for- three games. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Man, if you uh, asked, if you asked, like, like, 14 year old chris what was a better game kingdom hearts 2 or fucking uh Metal Gear Solid 3, i think i would explode <laughs> yeah i, I would malfunction so oh. before we close out here i just want to say we are at number 44 we have 44 games on this list if we do three games per episode which is what we've been trying to do we only have two episodes list left list left list left to finish this list right and then we will be doing something with it we don't know yet what burning it hopefully but hopefully not honestly not a bad idea print it out poster size burn it um we've got some ideas we'll let you know so just get excited this list is not gonna be around forever two more episodes folks oh no folks i i just want to say real quick i'm not on the podcast next week and i'm terrified because every time i'm not on here you chuckle fucks put some shitty games where they don't belong on this list because i'm not there you guys like oh yeah yeah i guess it is the greatest game of all time let's put it all the way up there sneaking sneaking is better than factorio yeah yeah, i I don't need to hear anything from the man who has factorio at number six thank you for your time hey factorio is an excellent game Um, it is folks uh if you enjoyed this please go to anchor.fm slash local chat and think about supporting us that would be fantastic i have been your host will crosby joining me today was the one and only ian gibson and chris from save data um, save data next week i have no idea who's on the show so that'll be fun probably david um so yeah let's uh and elise make yourself free david and elise show um, there i just figured it out i know it's two number one <laughs> Oh, oh no, they're gonna pack Kingdom Hearts. Yeah. We're gonna put the rest of the Kingdom Hearts games on this list. No, we're gonna put hentai games at the top. Um, oh, <laughs> folks, honey, <laughs> honey, please uh, check out our YouTube channel, subpixelfilms.com. We'll bring you straight there. You can enjoy that. You can enjoy all sorts of things, including my hot, hot body. Uh, Monday, hopefully, is a new show coming out. I gotta work on that a bunch tomorrow because I'm away this weekend, so that'll be fun but we might also end up moving it so who knows folks uh ian's about to check it and then he's gonna realize what it is but until then we will see you all next week oh